What will the dogfights of the future look like? The answer to this very question is the F-35 Lightning II from Lockheed Martin. This American fighter jet combines unique capabilities not available in previous generations with the integration of emerging technologies that could make it a central element of U.S. military strategy for decades to come. Stay tuned to find out what makes Lightning II so special. Plans for the development and acquisition of fifth-generation F-35 fighters started as part of the Joint Strike Fighter JSF program, which is a merger of two separate projects, the Common Affordable Lightweight Fighter CAF and the Joint Advanced Strike Technology JAST. The first was a DARPA program to create a Stovall short takeoff and vertical landing aircraft strike fighter for the United States Marine Corps and replace the aging F-16 Fighting Falcon. The second was the implementation of one particular recommendation of the United States Department of Defense bottom-up review to include the United States Navy in the Common Strike Fighter program. As part of this advice, the Pentagon continued the F-22 Raptor and F-A-18 EF Super Hornet programs, canceled the Air Force Multi-Role Fighter MRF, and Navy Advanced Attack Fighter AFX programs, and began to reduce the purchase of F-16 and F-A-18 CD. In addition to the United States, the JSF program was funded by the United Kingdom, Italy, the Netherlands, Canada, Australia, Norway, Denmark, and Turkey. However, the latter was suspended after purchasing the Russian S-400 system, despite Turkey's plans to buy 100 Lightning II aircraft. JSF launched in 1995 and has been regularly criticized for cost overruns during development and the overall projected cost of the program over the life of the aircraft. By 2023, the forecast for the use of new fighters until 2070 assumed spending more than $400 billion on the acquisition of the devices themselves and another $1.7 trillion on their maintenance and operation. The service initially planned to reduce development, production, and operating costs, hoping that the design for all three versions of the F-35 would have 80% commonality of parts. But in the end, this number was greatly reduced, ending up at 20% of the total structure. Yes, you understood that correctly. There were three versions of the fighter, at least if we're talking about the main ones. F-35A conventional takeoff and landing, CTOL. A light fighter that replaced the General Dynamics F-16 fighters and the legendary Fairchild Republic A-10 attack aircraft, requires approximately 8,000 feet of groomed runway but is also the most cost-effective option for the latest fighter jet. F-35B short takeoff and vertical landing, Stovall. An aircraft designed as a replacement for the American McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier, as well as the McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet, specifically for ships slightly smaller than aircraft carriers, capable of taking off from runways of only about 600 feet. F-35C, carrier-based CV Catobar catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery. Best option for operations aboard U.S. Navy Nimitz and Ford-class aircraft carriers and supercarriers. This version has the widest wingspan thanks to which it can maintain a lower speed during takeoff and landing and the largest internal fuel reserve. However, the most popular version both for the United States itself and its allies was and remains the F-35A. By January of 2024, the F-35 Enterprise had accumulated over 773,000 flight hours, trained 2,280 pilots, and 15,400 maintainers in 14 flight services around the world, and the total number of missions had broken the 469,000 mark. Right now, Lockheed's new birds are deployed on 32 bases and 11 ships, bringing the total number of participating countries to 17. So now if someone asks you what's the most popular fighter currently, you now know exactly what to answer. The F-35 has a wingtail configuration with two vertical stabilizers angled for stealth. Flight control surfaces include leading edge flaps, flaperons, rudders, and all moving horizontal tails. The leading edge or chine root extensions also point forward towards the inlets. The moderately small 35-foot wingspan of the F-35A and F-35B variants is due to the requirement to accomodate U.S. Navy amphibious assault ships and elevators inside, 
even though the services found the larger wingspan of the F-35C to be more economical. The fixed diverterless supersonic inlets DSI, use a bumped compression surface and forward-swept cowl to shed the boundary layer of the forebody away from the inlets, which form a Y-duct for the engine. From a design standpoint, the F-35 has taken lessons learned from the F-22 Raptor very well. Composites made up 35% of the airframe's weight, of which bismalamide and epoxy composites accounted for the lion's share, and ladder batches epoxy resin reinforced with carbon nanotubes appeared. However, despite all the efforts to lighten the airframe, its weight is significantly heavier than the previous light fighters that it replaced. After all, even the lightest variant of the F-35 has an empty weight of 29,300 pounds. But this, of course, has significant advantages, including a greater range due to large fuel reserves, as well as much more dangerous weapons that can handle any task. And let's not forget about one very important aspect of the F-35 design, the effective dispersion area. The engineers did a good job molding the fighter's airframe, aligning the edges in the continuous curvature of the surfaces. The skin panels, in turn, were made jagged, masking the front part of the engine and turbine. DSI uses a compression bulge and forward-swept cowling rather than a separation gap or bleed system to divert the boundary layer away from the intake port, eliminating the diverter cavity and further reducing the radar signature of the stealth vehicle. For ease of maintenance, the F-35 design was developed using the experience of creating earlier stealth aircraft like the F-22 Raptor we already mentioned. For example, the F-35's innovative radar-absorbing fiber matte skin is more durable and less difficult to maintain than older top coats, and in general, the fighter received reduced infrared and visual signatures, as well as strict control of radio frequency emitters to prevent their detection. One Pratt & Whitney F-135 turbofan engine was selected as the engine for the F-35, having a low-bypass augmented turbofan with a rated thrust of 28,000 pound-feet at military power and 43,000 pound-feet with afterburner. The engine was developed based on the earlier F-119 variant installed in the F-22 fighter, but with a larger fan, a higher bypass ratio for increased subsonic thrust and fuel efficiency, and without optimization for supercruise flight. The engine contributes to the F-35 stealth by having a low observable augmenter or afterburner that incorporates fuel injectors into thick curved veins. These veins are covered by ceramic radar absorbent materials and mask the turbine. The inconspicuous axis-symmetric nozzle consists of 15 partially overlapping flaps that form a sawtooth pattern on the trailing edge, which reduces the fighter's radar signature and creates vortices that reduce the infrared signature of the exhaust plume. The main disadvantage of the aircraft engine for the U.S. Navy was its size, which forced the service to modify its on-the-fly resupply system to facilitate logistic support at sea. The fighter jet's integrated power package IPP, intelligently distributes power and temperatures, integrating control of what's happening around it, activation of the auxiliary power unit, engine starting, and many other functions into a unitary system. In order to better adapt new American fighters to future threats, the Adaptive Engine Transition Program AETP, was launched in 2016 to develop and test adaptive cycle engines. The main incentive is the remotorization of the F-35. The development contracts were awarded to the already familiar General Electric and Pratt & Whitney, who were asked to prepare the XA-100 and XA-101 engines, respectively. But Pratt & Whitney decided to do some extra homework by improving the existing base F-135 engines. Engine core update was developed with an eye to Block 4 updates. The innovation increased engine thrust and fuel consumption by 5% as well as the cooling capacity of certain air released by 50%. Ultimately, the U.S. service was completely satisfied with the ECU, which led them to decide to abandon AETP and GE's XA-100 proposals in 2023 to provide additional power and cooling for the F-35. Recent geopolitical events and rapidly changing threats to our little blue ball have led to a surge in Lightning II orders, Moreover, those customers who order them today will receive the most technically mature fighter with the widest range of capabilities and even greater growth potential than in previous versions. 
We're talking about the latest Block 4 update with advanced technology Refresh 3 avionics, including better processing power with updated processor and memory modules, new displays, new electro-optical targeting system EOTS, and distributed aperture system DAS, engine upgrades that increase the amount of cooling available to support additional mission systems, and a new radar called ANAPG-85 compatible with the three basic variants of the aircraft. In addition to regular software updates, Lightning IIs began to rapidly add more and more different weapons to their internal compartments, 2,500 or 1,500 pound bombs, joint direct attack munition paveway, joint standoff weapon, cluster munitions, GBU-39 small diameter bombs, GBU-53B SDB-2, AIM-120 AMRAM, AIM-9X, and AIM-132 ASRAM. And this isn't even the entire arsenal available to F-35 pilots. In addition to the above, the fighter received certification for nuclear strike in the spring of 2024. Yes, now like its more seasoned colleagues, Lightning II can transport B-6112 thermonuclear bombs. Reason simple. The intensity of friction between Russia, NATO, and the United States. In May of 2024, it became known that the U.S. Air Force had signed its first contract for Joint Strike Missile Cruise Missiles. The main purpose of all this appears to be to give the F-35A fighters temporary anti-ship capability until the aircraft received the larger AGM-158C long-range anti-ship missile, El Razum. Moreover, the ammunition fits perfectly into the internal compartments which will allow the Lightning II to use it while remaining as secretive as possible to enemy radars. But the most interesting thing is, of course, combat lasers. Lockheed Martin's exploring the possibility of integrating a fiber laser that uses a spectral beam that combines multiple individual laser modules into a single gigabeam that's scalable depending on mission requirements. Let's add here a whole fleet of collaborative combat aircraft drones being developed along with integration for the future sixth-generation fighter of the next-generation air dominance NGAD program and the latest B-21 Raider bomber. The result is not just a fleet of fighters, but a real Avengers-level threat. Now it's your turn to tell us which feature of the F-35 impressed you the most. Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.